Hustle YouTube. This is my first proper video that I've tried to produce properly, sort of. I was supposed to have help this afternoon, but she's asleep on the couch watching Netflix. Doesn't really matter too much. All we're doing today is I got a new toy. Thought, fuck it, why not? I've skipped out on filming nearly everything that I meant to put on YouTube. Like, we've started the cross car frame, that's halfway done. The VF 750 is halfway done. The other CBR 1000 motor is already built. My wife's EXC supermoto, which was my old supermoto, was half done, but that was supposed to be a surprise. But fire. So today we're going to change the front tyre on the CBR, new toy, bought one off. Alright, so pretty straightforward, just have to drop the front tyre out. since I've done it's been a while since I pulled the front door after this since I've been on the reopen I've got I had to remove the calipers always going to be the same regardless of whether you're using a manual bead breaker or a powered machine like this 
you have to remember to, to remove the valve or it's not going to be much fun. Part of it is called the shovel. Don't want that to hit the aluminium rims or chip the um, powder coating. I used to do all this with levers, so it might have some little chips on them anyway. running because it's really loud. I just want to make sure there's a grip on the room. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it is where the money's at. Which is the reason I bought one of these things. Because doing this with levers sucks. You can get them protectors and they still split and you still gauge the ribs up. So, 
and I change what between the road bikes and the sports bikes and the quad I don't know upwards of 30 odd tyres a year and then I got friends that and my sister and my brother-in-law that also ride and for some reason I always get spooched into doing it so removing tyres with one of these so easy you got what's called a duck head or a a duck, so you have the head and the tail. When you're removing a tire, what you do is you get your lever, push this side of the tire down into the, the groove in the middle of the rim, and pull the tire up over the duck's head, just like that. side and then twisting the rim in the tire and trying to pull it out to get it off. Get the lever through. Because the lever's on the head you don't have to worry about scratching your rim up. Pull it up over. because I'm too broke to afford super courses at the moment building like two bikes at the moment and a buggy a cross cart I should say your money tends to disappear pretty quick all right so on the rear uh, on the brake disc here somewhere there's an arrow for direction pointing that way that's why I didn't bother remembering which way I took it off Pointing that way, that's the way that it goes back in the bike, and then on your tyre, you also have an arrow forward direction. So basically, this tyre has to go on this way. Alright, a bit of lubrication. I'm trying to put the bead on. Double check that we're going the right way. There's my arrow. That way, yeah, that way. tires back on. Not a lot of different taking them off. That when you're putting them on, the tire goes under the duck head instead of over. And so over the tail. So like this. Slip it on a bit. And the important part is just trying to keep the tire into that middle that middle part of the groove in the rim. 
so it goes on nice and easy and you're not putting all the strain on the machine and stretching the crap out of the door. up a bit there. I have to make sure it's in the center of that room. back in yet just because sometimes you need a lot of air to beat the tire up. Sometimes it doesn't matter but because it sucks pulling it out again. And it looks like I'm out of air. It looks like I'm out of air again. Go wrong with the compressor. Fingers clear. Do not want to be putting your fingers in the gaps of the rim. And that always puts me on edge. But I think we're all the way on. That is rather important to make sure that your tyre has beaded properly all the way around. your room left to right but you can balance it around so it won't tell you which side to put the waves on but it'll tell you like top to bottom 
whether it's balanced that way, which is good enough. Bring this up to pressure. because it's boring but clean all your old weights and the little glowy parts and all the brake dust that feel from that off the edge of your rims for your new stickers um, whilst I was doing that and getting the balancer out and, and whatnot I remembered don't buy the cheapest balancer that you can find this style is fine but maybe buy a good brand because I bought the cheapest one I could find and when I got it I had to replace the bearing because they were garbage I had to find a new shaft to go through the center which is a bit round bar anyway because it was not matching the holes in the cones that push into the um into the center of your hub and once I'd done that then I also realised that um, the cones hadn't been machined on centre anyway, so they were like when you when you put the rim in, you could see that the cone wasn't locating the rim to the centre of the axle, like the shaft that goes through the centre. So I had to machine up or remachine the cones at work because it basically wouldn't work. Um, now when you mount your rims in these. Some rims it's probably not going to matter, but I'll pull them out anyway. Pull your spaces out of your rim because your spaces that don't go inside of the bearing are really only held there by the dust seal. So if your cones are pressed into them, your rim can still move up and down and it won't be centered. So if you pull your spaces out and you push the cones straight into the center bearing, like into the, your center hub bearings, you should be fine. Don't have to worry about any movement. Um, make sure that you, like I said, make sure you have no grease or anything dirty or nasty on these or it won't stick. Now, you don't have to spin these a million mile, million mile an hour, you only have to spin them a little bit and just let them stop and then 12 o'clock from where it stops is where you need to add weight. Obviously the bottom is heavier because it's where it stopped. So, we'll start now. probably the more boring part of the process but we call it relaxing. Yep. Alright. So obviously heavy down here, straight up. We need that weight. And what I like to do myself, some weights here. Now yeah, these are cheap, you can get these on eBay. I think they're like a dollar for a strip or something. And you just cut off the weight that you need. Yeah, I like to do it evenly. If it needs, I don't know what are these grams, yeah. 
needs 10 grams, I like to put a 5 on each side. Because like I said, these balances don't balance your rim left to right, only at the bottom. So. <coughs> also, whilst I'm doing this, because you don't know exactly how much it needs, I tend to not stick them there because it might need 10 grams on each side or or whatnot. So I'd rather not have half a million little weights if it just needs and a couple of bigger ones. So I will tape these using some sticky tape to the top. And once I put them there, I will mark with a texture where they go. something you just want to take the time with. Oh, and we spin it again and see what it does. We're going to come back. I think it needs more. more so I'm gonna see you tape a couple more fives there. Little them scissors. Yeah, I'm gonna see tape two more fives there and if this is enough then I'll replace it with That's the drawback of these sort of machines. If you get the electric ones, they tell you exactly how much weight on which side and exactly where it has to go. So, like I said, these work. They work okay. And sometimes you can see that it wants to go, but it hasn't quite got enough, and the resistance of the bearings and whatnot will stop it. So you can just give it a bit of a flick and it'll help it along a bit. Okay, I think both of those weights need to come this way a bit. Hence why I use sticky tape, just to get it perfect. <coughs> before you go stick them down. So once you've got the weights where you're sort of happy with them, put a text mark where they go and um, peel the weights off the so stick tape off and put the weights back on. The weights there. Let's see what this wants to do now. Like I said, not the most exciting thing in the world. I 
I do think we are getting close. Let's check a couple more fives on. Getting very close, but you can see it doesn't want to come back. It's slowly making its way. So I'll put another five on. So, largest point, heaviest point, or well, was. So if we turn it sideways now, like this, it should just sit there. Yep, flick it back the other way. Seems relatively even. I'll give it a bit of a touch and get it going, it's not going to keep going. So I think we're right now. What I will do. Right down, get some more texture. Mark the center point of the patch. The weights on both sides. Yeah, there. So we have, what's that, 15 or 15, so roughly 30 grams of weights on there. Oh, I'm not going to use three fives on each side. So. 10, 15, 20, and then we use one of those fives on each side and keep it even, left or right. Come on, sit there for now. You wait, it's got a sticky little back on it. Peel it off. And just like that, we are balanced. Should be in theory. Yeah, I actually do feel like it could probably use one more five, probably. Mm. Well, that is that. On to the next chapter. Okay. Now that we have our rim balance, rim and tire balance, and um, we've wiped all the dirt off of our spaces and around the dust wheels of the hub, we're ready to start putting it back in. So, fit your rim there. Grab your axle, which should have greased up a little bit. Don't want heaps of grease on anything, just, just a little bit is fine. Uh, I think factory, I think you're supposed to use never seize or something, but a bit of grease is better than nothing. back in there. You shouldn't, you shouldn't ever have to use a hammer or anything to get them back in. If you have to, if you've got a second hand bike or um, you find that you're having to beat your axle in with like a hammer, there's something not right there. It should go in relatively easily. 
Um, if you are having to beat them in, you probably have a burr or something somewhere. And that needs to be addressed because if you don't, the next step won't really work. So, with your forks on the front of a motorcycle like this, the nut on the side doesn't really do much other than pull. If you look at your axle, it's got like a large side and then like it's the rest of it is skinny. But what it does is the side nut just pulls the spaces and bearings tight together. It doesn't actually stop the rim from sliding side to side between the fork legs, uh, between the fork bottoms, whatever you want to call them. So you do that up to torque spec. I've had to remove the calipers, the calipers have to go on next. Ah, um, I do make fun of torque spec when I'm building engines, I'm um, usually pretty anal on it, but for most things tight enough is good enough. Um, with your wheel bearings though, you don't want to go overboard because you will crush your bearings. If you have a little impact driver like this, they are great for getting things together and apart quickly. But you still want to check them with like a spanner or a ratchet afterwards. Because you don't really have a lot of feel as to how tight it really is. And you don't want to be cranking on it for ages and over tightening the shit out of everything. So the caliper is tight now. And the next step is what I was saying before about the axle only pulling the larger end of the axle and the spaces and everything together, is your fork leg can still move in and out because it's, it's the way it works. So with this, you don't want your fork legs to be spread out or pulled in. That's that's what these are for, these are to lock it up afterwards. You want it to be nice and straight because if it's not nice and straight, you get binding in the forks where when the buck's on the ground and you push on it, it won't be nice and smooth through the stroke. It'll be like you'll put pressure on it, you'll put pressure on it, and then it'll sort of let, let go. And that's because your forks are binding internally. So the trick that most people use, the way you got it on the stand here, it breaks up again. So give it a spin, hit the brakes. Give it a spin, hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. And all that sort of does is just shocks shocks it into settling where it's nice and happy. Now I'm only gonna use this to wind these in. I'm not actually gonna tighten it with the mm, wrong one. Ah, what I do is 12 and soft. With these, you do need 
do not have to crank the shit out of these. These lightly trip clamps do not have to be done up super tight. Nip them up, don't strip the fucking things. Your triple clamps less, I think most triple clamps are like eight newton meters or something like that, fuck all. You basically just use like one finger on your ratchet and just nip them up enough. Otherwise you'll get binding. These need a little bit more but not not a lot. Cool. That is about it.